unbelievable. It's like grease. There's not supposed to be any lubrication in here at all. And it's been in there for a while. This is the new and the old slave cylinder. You can see that there's a plug at the bottom of the old cylinder that needs to be removed and put into the new cylinder.
So this piece, this has um, like a chamfer on the end that has to face this way. So that on this side of this piece here, this arm, there's another chamfer, the opposite of this. So that needs to slide in there. So this will go through first. And then that nut goes on with the chamfer facing this way. And then the lock nut after it. And this can be adjusted later. So I don't know how, how well you can see this, probably not. So this particular piece, obviously this hook goes back in here this way. So this can only go on one way. And I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on there. Uh, the, on the right side break or the left side break, I actually took this off and cleaned up. Um, actually, maybe I could clean this up. That'll help a little bit. Okay, just enough so that this doesn't bind up with this. I'm going to put a little grease in here because this is supposed to actually turn and self-adjust. This is the tricky part. This spring needs to go from here to here and this rod has to go in the spring and it has to push on here and push on here at the same time. So I'm going to have to move the vise this way just so that I can do that. But I just wanted to show this to you real quick. Well, this took a while to get on there, but that's what it's supposed to look like. And the only way I can explain how I did this was I hooked this end of the spring on here first. I took this pin and I pushed it through the spring, but I had the hook here from the spring on this side and the pin on that side. Then what I did is I took a really thin coat hanger, made a loop out of it and put it on the spring, pulled the spring back until it went around this shaft and then pushed it on and then took a wire cutter and just cut this off of there. This is supposed to uh, be on here and have tension on there so it doesn't fall back. And in order to do that, it has this spring that if you see comes off of this side. Actually, I believe it was supposed to go on there first. It's supposed to go on down here and then hook on the here. Yep. So this spring should have been on there. It fell off and I didn't realize it goes on the bottom, not on the top. So I'm gonna to have to work with this coil on this end to get it around there and then hook it on here. So that's what that's supposed to look like. Hopefully you can see that. That spring goes underneath here, keeps tension on this. So it keeps this wheel, you can hear the clicking. So it keeps that lever on the wheel. So I think this part's done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to transition to the other piece that goes on the outside here, give you a look at that. So I don't know what they call this, but this is actually the positraction engagement gear. So if you push down on the plunger on the floor, this raises this out and engages the two axles together 
so that you have positive traction. This spring here doesn't have much tension on it, but when you put it on, it's actually pushing this out away from here. So I really don't want to put this on this brake housing right now because I want these to line up, this uh, these, the spline to line up with these gears. So this will get installed first. Then after this gets put back on the differential, then the brake housing will go on. And then after the brake housing, then this will go back on. So this is gonna go back in. You wanna keep this um, nut here loose enough that this these brake shoes aren't pushing up against this. Now this particular um, device here, this is actually a brake. I'm gonna have to go back on my own video and see which side goes in first because there's a little bit of an edge right here, but there's more of an edge right here. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm not sure if it goes in this way or if it goes in this way.
So here's what happened. My camera batteries went dead and I wanted to keep working and I didn't get to record some things. So I'm going to try to go back tomorrow and reenact uh, one of the seals that I put on. It's a plate that's just before the differential on the rear end and it's also it's sandwiched in between the brake housing and the differential. It's a plate that has an oil seal in it that was leaking and that's what caused all of that oil from the differential to get into the brake. So that seal was replaced. However, I wanted to show you what that differential fluid looks like. Uh, on the stick, it, it was way higher than the it showed on the stick that it should be. And it's a completely weird looking color, it almost looks like silly putty color, mixture between red and like a brown or a tan. So I'm gonna dump it into this pail here, give you an idea of what that looks like. Thank you for watching. My hope is that this video may have helped you repair your Case 580C right side brake. The next video will be on the replacement of the hydraulic ram seal that raises and lowers the bucket on the right side. If you have any comments, please let me know what they are. I will gladly read them and reply as soon as possible. Be safe and be blessed.